Tech fans. So, I feel like this video needs to be made because a lot of people are starting to come out of their minds a little bit about one, how the team is playing, two, the direction of the team, and three, the overall feeling of the team, I feel like has been misconstrued. So what made me want to come on here and do this and give me my ammo, as you will say, to want to talk about this. So I've been seeing a lot of things on social media and some rumbling, stirring from morons talking about how the rebuild still isn't over, talking about how it's AJ Hinch's fault, talking about how he's going to opt out after this upcoming year because his contract only has one more year left and some of the comments he made in Houston. So let's start with the overall team. So my last video, like I said, I came on here and I ranted pretty hard about, you know, just the overall play of the team and how they have not been very good and how the offense has been bad, even though offense has been down league wide. And since that video, they've only, they've won two games. They beat the Pirates uh, and then they took, uh, they've lost two games to the Astros so far, both one run games. So, and coming into the Houston series, the media had asked AJ Hinch about manage his time managing in Houston and what he missed. And what AJ Hinch had said, and he had said basically that Detroit was the first city that he's managed in that he didn't live in. Uh, that he missed seeing familiar faces every day, he missed seeing his family every single day, and he missed his drive to the ballpark every day. People misconstrued this as, as A.J. Hinch is tired of the Tigers and he's tired of the rebuild, and he's going to for sure opt out at the end of this year uh, because of the third year is his last year in the contract, and he's disappointed with how the rebuild has gone so far and the overall play of the team. Like I stressed in my last video, the defense has still been an issue with this team, uh, even though Javier Baez has been making some incredible plays short the last uh, since I made the last video last week. I don't know what you guys expect AJ Hinch to say. He won a World Series in Houston, and that was his first place he's ever managed where he had extreme amount of success. You know, when he went to Houston, the Astros were in a similar situation that the Tigers were in. They were a really bad team. Like, you think the Tigers are bad? Go back and look at the Astros from, like, 2011 or 12 to the time they won it in 2017. They won had so many years of consecutive 100 lost years that what we had from after 2016 until, you know, finally not losing 100 last year, actually knocking on the door of 500, it makes our rebuild look like nothing. Now... They went and they had an extremely good drafts. You know, they had franchise corner pieces to build around like Jose Altuve. And when they got really good, you know, they made smart trades. Getting Justin Verlander, Dallas Keuchel, you know, had won a Cy Young sometime uh, as they were getting good. And their prospects hit. You know, George Springer, Alex Bregman comes up. Jose Altuve comes up. Yuli Gurriel they got. And he was a big contributor. They had guys like Jake Marisnik was a really good player for them off the bench. And, you know, like I said, they got Justin Verlander, to, who was a, a playoff stud, who really just propelled them because in 2016 they were a, a playoff team, but they needed someone like a Justin Verlander like in 2017, and they did. They got him, and they won the World Series. So that team, when he took over that franchise from Bo Porter, who was the manager, Bo Porter is kind of like Alan Trammell was when Leland took over the Tigers in 06, where they had, like, the guys in place, but they weren't winning. They were on the precipice of winning. And now, Hinch took over and they won. And they were still winning. And, you know, who's to say they don't win the World Series, you know, in 19 when uh, when they were there. And, you know, they lost in Game 7. So, who knows? My point is, is the Tigers are in a similar situation when Hinch took over last year. Uh, they have guys that... We have kind of franchise cornerstones-ish that we know we're going to build around, which is Torkelson. But this is Torkelson's first year. When A.J. Hinch took over in Houston, Jose Altuve was already an established player in the league. And George Springer was becoming an established player in the league. And, you know, Bregman came up around guys like Carlos Correa, 
who was already an established player in the league. You know, it's kind of different with the Tigers where they are in their rebuild versus the Astros because all their bigger their bigger guys, the unestablished dudes, now the guys that the Tigers expect to lean on as franchise cornerstones to build around, they're like in their first year. You know, like you can build around like in your pitching staff, that's fine. You know, Casey Mize, Matt Manning, Terry Scooble, you see what Bo Brisky did, Alex Fajardo had a good start, and you still got guys on the farm and on long to go with the veterans that we currently have. But it's a different situation. You know, you, you can have great pitching and they can be your franchise guys, but you still need your building blocks in the offense. Pitching can only prevent runs. You know, you can't score runs while you're on the mound on defense. It doesn't work like that. You need someone and in, in, in they're bopping the ball and no one's doing that right now. The Tigers are finally getting their offensive prospects to the big leagues. You know, it helps that they have Jose Altuve, uh, not Jose Altuve, uh, Javier Baez, you know, to help contribute with the team and be an established player. And, you know, guys like Jamer, who's finally starting to swing a, a good bat, he had a five-game hitting streak, and, you know, he had a five straight games on extra base hit. So he's, like I said, I knew he would come out of it. He's starting to come out of it. But Miguel Cabrera's on the back end of his, his career, you know, and he's going to be gone after next year. Like, Robbie Grossman isn't a building block. He's in his 30s. He's a a, a, a role-player kind of guy. And, you know, Cuba Dew has been struggling. He could be in a sophomore slump, but you don't know if he's a forever building block guy. You still don't know what you have in some of these guys in the minors, like Cody Clemens, who's been ripping the ball off. Uh, ripping the ball, uh, cover off the ball, and you still got guys like Riley Green, who's yet to make an impact in the big leagues because he's been hurt, so you don't know where he's going to be uh, in your franchise future. You expect him to be a building block and someone that you build around with Torkelson and whatnot like that. So <sighs> they're just in different spots. And for people to sit here and start blaming Al Avila and A.J. Hinch, and particularly A.J. Hinch, that is a bunch of bullshit because – if you gave Ron Gardenhire that team that Hitch managed to get 77 wins out of last year, they would have won 60 games at most. And the proof is in the pudding with the 2019 team that lost 114 games. Because Hinch took a similar team that lost 114 games in 2019 with just a marginal bit amount of talent put in it. And they somehow managed to have the fifth best record in the American League after May. They had they ended up winning seventy seven games after starting nine and twenty three. Think about that. They're they're nine games under five hundred now. Imagine you are over ten plus five games under five hundred, and you still finish within a breath of five hundred. That is an insane amount, and that is an insane pace to play with that team. And I don't know why Tiger fans are getting their panties all up in a bunch because they started the same way last year. And here's the thing. Hinch had to manipulate the lineup, and this was another thing that I've been I've been reading. They go, there's no urgency on the team, and I and I fucking hate that. When you have moronic fans that go, these guys don't even look like they're trying. There's no urgency. There's no sense of being down in this, and they're just out there going with the motions. It's like, what do you think? These guys are athletes at the highest level. You think that they're just going out there, going on Instagram and checking their fucking phone? Yeah, you know, I just don't feel like playing today. We're going to go out there and continually get our ass kicked. Like, I understand they, they're the second worst team in baseball right now be, in front of the Reds. But that is such a moronic thing to say. These are professional athletes. They want to win every single day. This team won 77 games last year. Do you think they want to take a step back and only win 60 this year, 65? No. There is progress forward. This roster is better than last year. They started the same way. And much like last year, Hinch was constantly rotating guys in and out, trying to figure out a lineup that they could stick. For fuck's sake, he wrote 130 different lineups last year. 130. He's do, he did everything he possibly could to squeeze every bit of talent, every bit of putting guys in the right place at the right time to make to get the best results see, that he possibly could last year. And he's trying to do the same thing this year. There's only so much he can do. When you have Scope that's not even hitting his weight, when Jamer's finally coming out of it, when you didn't have Javier Baez for nine games, like Javier Baez isn't a guy that... Is, is gonna you're gonna be able to get, carry your team around all the time? Like he's just such a streaky hitter. 
He's such a streaky hitter. You need some other players to support him. When he was at his best in Chicago, he had Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant and Ben Zobris, all those guys around him, uh, and, and, and uh, Miguel Montero and Wilson Contreras and Kyle Schwarber. He was uh, not like the guy. I mean, for fuck's sake, Chris Bryant was an MVP with, with Javier Baez. He's, he's a great player, but he's not that guy that's going to be consistent day in and day out. Baez is going to have two hot weeks, and he's going to have two cold weeks. He's going to have a hot month, and then he's going to look like he can't even hit a fucking broad side of the barn. He's not that kind of guy. And this was misconstrued with the Tigers, and I said this when they signed him. He's hot, and then he's cold. There's never really any consistency of flatline. Uh, where you know he's just like, okay, well, he may not be hitting a home runs, but he's going to be hitting 340, and he's going to have a little bit of extra power, uh, extra base power. It just is what it is, you know? And and Meadows has yet to really show the the power that you know he's going he's gonna to have, but, you know, he's a, he's a guy that could help support him. And then you need Scope to start hitting home runs. My point with this, because I already talked about this last video, is Hinch is doing everything he can. He's doing everything. Literally trying to put anyone out there that is, is making consistent contact. Not even hitting home runs. Like, literally making consistent contact and not striking out a million times. Torkelson's within a 3 for 33 slump right now. How the fuck is he supposed to put him out there and put him number 5 in the lineup like he had him a couple times before? How do you put that get bat in the middle of your lineup when he is striking out as much as he's striking out? He's in a 3 for 33 What's he supposed to do? He has no choice but to put Harold Castro out there. And then there's injuries. And Willie Castro, this is my only gripe with him, is he keeps putting Willie Castro on the outfield. And they lost last night because they had Willie Castro in the outfield and he misplayed a ball. He's misplayed two balls out in left field. He's a fucking shortstop and second baseman by trade. He's not a left fielder. But what's he doing? He's literally, uh, because Austin Meadows was scratched, but he's literally trying anything and everything. He's putting names at a dartboard and just going, and seeing what sticks at this point, because he needs, he has the lineup has no consistency through the top to the bottom. Like, you can't just go, okay, well, Canelario, Meadows, Baez. And that's the entire lineup. You're three, four, five. He's trying to sprinkle it out a little bit. Like, Harold Castro has been a pretty pesky hitter so far this year. But you, you don't want Harold Castro as your fucking three-hole hitter. You know, he doesn't have any power. So you got to sprinkle him a little bit out in the lineup. And Jonathan Scope has a lot of pop. But he's not hitting. But you need him at least in a, in a, in a spot where, you know, if he gets hot and he finally does send him out of the yard, he can hit you a three-run shot because he's capable of it. You know, and Candelario, they've had him in, in the two, the three, the four, and the five spot. Because... You know, he's good at getting extra base hits, and he can put a ball out of the yard like he did the other night when they lost uh, because of Gregory Soto. And that was another thing. You know, if you're going to gonna blame Hinch for anything, like that game, the first game in Houston in the ninth inning, there was two guys on and a lefty of Kyle Tucker. They weren't playing double play defense. I don't understand this. Why do you have the shift on with two runners on first and second? You need a double play. You can't play the shift when you need a double play. You need to be playing double play depth because you're trying to get two outs to help your closer. And what does Soto do? He gets a tailor-made double play ball, and since that fucking shift was on, the ball went right where Javier Baez should have been standing. That would have been an easy double play, and they got a walk-off. So, you know, some of that shit. But that's with any manager. Like, any manager is going to make decisions like that and take risks like that that you're not going to agree with. You know, like some people don't think Soto should be the closer, but Soto got it done the majority of the time last year. People think that your closer is going to go out there and, and go one, two, three every single time because your closer it doesn't work like that. Mariano Rivera only closed out 87% of every single game he ever was in, which means there was a 13% of the chance of time that he blew the fucking save. And this is the guy that had almost 700 saves in his career. So it's just the moronic baseball fans that don't know anything about the fucking game and the, and the, and the thing. Like you can't sit there... And blame Hinch for this. If that team last year was managed by Ron Gardenhire, they would have won 60 fucking games. And Hinch somehow squeezed 77 wins out of it. You can't sit here and blame this on Hinch. Because it's not his fault. He is literally doing everything he could do. He's doing the same thing he did last year. The issue is, is right now, the talent provided on the field is not doing anything. He can't go up to them with a magic genie lamp, rub their fucking head or whatever, and say, hit. Because if you could, don't you think you would have tried it by now?
They've won nine games. They're over a month into the season. This team had expectations coming in. Chris Illich spent. He added. They're trying. And another thing, a big difference in a, in a hinge factor. The guy is really good at managing a bullpen. Look at the arms that this front office has developed that's now in the bullpen. They have the best bullpen in the major leagues right now by ERA. You look at guys like, well, Vest did a great job. Jacob Barnes did a great job. Alex Lang has done a great job. Andrew Chafin, after his first outing, has done an extremely good job. And he gets out lefties and righties as a lefty, and that's huge. Gregory Soto, he's always had problems with walks. Soto's going to go out there and have starts like he had against Pittsburgh where he got him out one, two, three, and nine. He's going to have like he had in Minnesota. He's wild, but the guy throws 98 with a wipeout slider. Michael Fulmer has completely reinvented himself. And that's a credit to not only A.J. Hinch as bullpen management and knowing how to use guys in the right spot, or Drew Hutchinson and Willie Peralta. All these guys have come out there and, and pitch phenomenal. And that's not only a credit to A.J. Hinch, but that's also a credit to Al Avila. What was one thing that Dave Dombrowski could never do as Tigers general manager? And that was build a bullpen. That team could have won multiple multiple, meaning more than one, multiple championships that they ever had a fucking bullpen. But Dave Dombrowski could never build a bullpen. And his philosophy still is fucking franchises over. Look what he's done to the Phillies. Joe Girardi is about to lose his fucking job because of Dave Dombrowski. He sat there, got him a bunch of sluggers who couldn't play defense, and they had a game against the Mets where they scored seven in the ninth inning. You know what the Phillies' biggest issue has been? Their fucking bullpen. Do we see the dots connecting here? Dave Dombrowski could never build a bullpen. And you have a team that's as star-studded as the Phillies is that can hit and has a couple good pitchers on there. Wow, sounded a lot like the Tigers. But still can't close out games. So what has Avila done? He has gone. If if you people that just want to say Avila's drafts were easy because he had high round picks, Casey Mize and all that stuff. Terry Scrubel, later round pick. Bo Brisky was a 29th round pick. And look what he's done. He's pitched nothing but good ball so far. He's had a little bit of problems with the walks his last couple starts. Fine, whatever. But he's done nothing but pitch very well. Joey Wentz is a guy he got from a trade. Wait till you see him. Alex Fiedo was another guy that was uh, that's already coming up, and you see what he could do and what his future could be. You know, another guy that they got. This talent that he drafted and that he's acquired through trades, or Austin Meadows is another perfect example. It's it's playing dividend for the Tigers. If this was a Dave Dombrowski team, there would be no one there because he didn't have a minor league system. He would still be trying to get guys that had shitty contracts just to try to put a veteran out there, someone who's proven, who really wasn't proven, he was just an overpaid, a shitty veteran that no one wanted a team, it was a contract dump, and try to put it out there. Avila has done nothing but good drafts, and he's had some really good trades so far in the last couple of years. And you're seeing some of these prospects that were are minor league depth, that are like the 22nd, 19th ranked prospects in the Tigers farm, in the farm system. And they're coming up and they're playing a role in the big leagues when they need uh, someone to come up because they are lacking at the major league level due to an injury. Or they have a double header and they need a spot starter. This is stuff they have in the minor leagues. Some of the arms, some of the players, some of the depth that, that this team has never had before. This team is talented. This team has good players. They're just not showing it right now. And for people to sit here and try to blame this on A.J. Hinch for, for, for this slow start and they're not hitting, that is a bunch of bullshit because it is not A.J. Hinch's fault. And you cannot put this on him. Has he made a couple bad decisions? Yeah, but there's 162 games in a season. Every manager is going to do something they could see in 2020 hindsight, which they didn't do. It's just how baseball works. You, you cannot blame this on A.J. Hinch because it's not his fault. A.J. Hinch is one of the best baseball minds in baseball. He's one of the best managers in baseball. And the Tigers are fuck all lucky that they got him. Because you know something? If he was the op out like that, he would have another job. And you know something? A team with a, a bit more talent, he would have them as World Series contenders because he is a 
fucking good manager. But you can only do so much when your team as a collective can't do shit right now. And he's throwing darts at a dartboard and just trying to see what sticks. Where can he make a lineup? Where can I try to make this team have one through six production and hope the bottom half hits? And he's just throwing names everywhere. You can only do so much. You can only do so much as a manager. You can only write so many different lineups. Like, is he supposed to put Pauls in the three hole and hope that he can fucking have a game? That And that's what it's like right now for the Tigers. But you cannot blame the son of Vila. You cannot blame this and say his, his the rebuild has not been good so far and they're still going to be in it forever because they have no talent. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. They have a lot of talent on this team and they have a lot of good young players and they will win. They will win. But like I said last year, they were off to a slow start last year. And Hinch did all that he could to finally find a combination of guys. Eric Haas came out of nowhere last year, hit 20-some bombs. Perfect example. A guy that they gave an opportunity to and he exceeded with it. Akil Badu eventually had a couple of good stretches and was great. Chamber Candelario really broke out and again was one of the best hitters. Scope had a, a, a near career year. You know, and when he finally broke out and he had it. And Grossman had 20-some home runs. And he was a, was a major contributor and somebody could put out there every single day in left field. And you had, you know, good defense from Derrick Hill in the time. And, you know, look at what they had to do for shortstop. I mean, they had to play so many shortstops last year. And they had to play so many different center fielders last year. This team is going to win. Are they going to win a World Series? No. Are they even a second wild card team? As of right now, fuck no. But could they be? I mean... You win 6 of 10 for a couple of weeks, you know, your record looks a lot better. And it's not like anyone's really destroying in the division. The White Sox are hurt. Minnesota just lost Carlos Correa. You know, their pitching staff is overperforming. They're not going to play it the way they are. The Guardians have already slumped off. The Royals aren't any much better than us right now. Even though Bobby Witt's been hitting a lot better. But you cannot blame this on A.J. Hinch. You want to sit there and talk shit about how bad the players are. Miggy has no legs left. Scope can't hit anything. You know, Meadows hasn't hit any home runs yet. How bad the production has been from like Haas and all that. Fine. And how bad Torkelson, you know, Torkelson can't hit right now. That's completely warranted. But Hinch is literally trying every single thing that he can right now to get a lineup out there. That is going to give you more than two runs a game. And it's just not happening right now. It's just not. Because there's so many guys slumping at the at once. You know. And like I said. By, they're big guys. Baez isn't a dude that you. Is, is Miguel Cabrera 2012. He's not the guy. He is a rule dude. He's like Magliar Donez was. You know. To Magliota Pudge to Granderson. Back in the day. He's He's like. He's a, control, he's a role player. He's not a guy that you build a team around. But this team will hit. This team will play better. I'm not happy about their record. and I'm not happy about their start. But they will play better. They will be better. But I'll be fuck all if I'm going to let this be said about how A.J. Hinch is the issue, how Al Avila is the issue, when they're Minor league depth has already helped them out this season in injury times. They've managed to replace two good starting pitchers with guys in the minor leagues and some of their signings, like Michael Pineda and, you know, Bo Brisky coming up, a 29th round draft pick. And then, like, how late Tarek... And Tarek Skubal's been their best pitcher. Go look when Tarek Skubal was drafted. Mr. Fucking, he had all these easy drafts. Fuck off. That is guys that people slept on, that they saw something, and they developed. And good signings, like Michael Pineda, that they've seen something in, that they knew he could contribute. It's not their fault that the team is underperforming. They've put the players in place. They've spent the money. Hinch is writing the lineups to the best he can to, to try to make it some semblance of guys he can connect the dots with to get more than two runs. They're just not playing well. But don't sit there and talk shit about A.J. Hinch because it's not his fault. He is a great manager. And he's doing all that he can.
So that's all I got for you guys today. And uh, I'll see you next week. Go Tigers.